Today we're at XR Stage to shoot a short narrative film called Away. And the goal of this is to explore virtual production techniques and also create educational material around this, like what you're listening to right now. I guess in a very basic sense, an XR stage is a shooting environment that brings together practical and virtual sets. So recently, what that's really come to mean is an LED volume that allows you to display content on the LED walls, mix that with any sort of practical elements that you want, and be able to sell that as photorealistic through the camera lens. In a typical production, you start with the narrative and then you create the environments around this narrative. In a way, we actually took a different approach to this and worked backwards, starting with these virtual environments that we had built ahead of time and knew looked really good on stage on an LED wall, and we built a narrative to fit these environments. I think one of the biggest misunderstandings about XR is the confusion between shooting 3D virtual environments on an LED wall versus flat plates. And the important thing to understand is that these are not flat plates being shot and captured in camera. These are full 3D environments. There are a couple moving parts here, a couple different teams that you need to, to bring your vision to reality. A team of Unreal experts, a system engineering team, and a physical production team that is knowledgeable or experienced on how to shoot content on LED volumes. So within the pre-production phase for virtual production, content development really all starts with the creative vision. The first thing you have to figure out is what exactly is this environment going to be and what's it going to look like and what purpose it's going to serve. And once you have that, you can start moving into asset preparation and actually creating these 3D assets either from scratch or picking them from pre-existing asset libraries in order to fill this space as you're building your scenes. Or, which is most often the case, some sort of combination of the two. Then you can actually start blocking out your scene. And you do this at a pretty rough level. Uh, this doesn't need to be photorealistic quality. It, it doesn't have final lighting but you, you're really trying to figure out where everything is going to go and what, sh what sort of shape your virtual set is going to take. And once you figure out exactly where these environments are going to be, then you can go in and do the final pass and take, take the level of detail of all the 3D assets and the lighting and everything around your actual shooting points within the scene up to a really, really high level so that you can achieve that photorealistic quality when you get on stage to shoot. One of our main goals that we wanted to explore with the production of Away is how far can we push content in just one day of shooting? We tackled a lot of really interesting challenges here between two separate environments, two physical set builds, and a fairly fleshed out narrative story all combined together into one piece. During pre-production in the forest scene, we generated our landscape, which is actually a really wide area, multiple square kilometers of forest with a lot of varying terrain that was generated procedurally. And then we actually went in and did our virtual scouting to try to find really interesting areas within this forest and terrain elements which created good frame compositions. And based on this, we actually picked the locations of the different spots that we shot from. In the cyberpunk scene, our goal was really to tell a story here and, and follow the character on a journey from point A to point B. And the challenge traditionally uh, shooting on an LED wall is you have this fixed stage. And the approach that we, we took to the cyberpunk scene is we built it around this idea of having the character walk on a treadmill that would simulate motion uh, while we move the scene at the same time and allow us to traverse this large amount of space. But between pre-production and, and actual production, it's really essential to get on stage and do some preparation ahead of time, both with the scene uh, and things like camera setup. I think when you're building a environment that, you look, that you've been looking at on a computer screen for so long, uh, it's really important to visualize that on the screen, on the LED wall ahead of time before you shoot. And that also allows you to test the project on the hardware that you're going to be running it on, which can sometimes differ between stages. 
uh, and figure out if there's any potential issues with the project and give you time to fix that ahead of time so that everything goes smoothly when production begins. Today we're on our first day of really shooting our actual short film. Um, so we have a 12 hour day to fit in our cyberpunk world that we're seeing here on the screen. And then we're switching over to our forest scene and all together it's gonna create a, a short film to show our production quality along with the new technology that XR introduces. Previs or pre-visualization is the process of going into the scene that you've created and starting to use virtual cameras as well as stand-in characters and things like that to actually start planning your shot setups and your camera position. This sort of previs and, and tech viz pre-production allows you to get in there really quickly and, for example, achieve a production like Away in only a day of shooting like we did. Right now we're shooting the plane crash digging scene, so we've scattered a bunch of debris around the set. So we had to shift our scene over a little bit. We made the decision to put the wing of the aircraft in the background here because previously we've only seen the fuselage and the nose. So right now we're just gonna look for a, a good placement in the back of this shot. So the, uh, the camera frustum is this square that you can see on screen and it is what reads the position of the camera and then makes what you see on the wall match what you'd expect to see from wherever the camera is. So it gives the illusion of this being a 3D world behind the screen by mapping the, the pixels relative to the camera instead of just looking at a, a flat wall. So there's two kinds of camera tracking. There's inside out and outside in. Here we are using inside out where we have a camera attached to the camera that's looking up at a constellation of infrared markers which then give it its placement on the stage and then we're also feeding zoom and focus data into that camera so that the unreal engine can understand where it is what the lens characteristics are and be able to reproduce that in the engine on any traditional set it takes a long time for a reset of any sort of scene. If it's moving even the camera ever so slightly and changing the action of an actor, it takes a long time to find that shot, figure out the lighting for it. If you're working in the middle of a forest like I have behind me, that's gonna take a, a tremendous amount of time to get the shot right. So for instance, we had a cyberpunk scene set up right next to our forest scene, and it only took a matter of moments for us to flip production from the cyberpunk scene to the forest. So on the stage, you can have a first unit shooting a scene with your principal actor. And within a matter of moments, that actor can switch to the second unit on the same exact stage, shoot a completely different scene while another production is taking place. Everything is encompassed here. Everything's in one location. And within that location, you can change the worlds any way you want it. This is the advantage of an XR stage. We're going from Aurora Borealis, nighttime shot in a tent, and within a matter of minutes, um, we can change this whole atmosphere, natural lighting to feel like the morning and a completely different world. The options are limitless when it comes to the situation. It's all about the ambient light, utilizing the screens to create practical lighting. So it's a lot of leverage points that you can utilize to, to light naturally and how it's gonna feel. Our roof is giving us the ability to give us what the sky would essentially be giving us without having to set up a really robust lighting system. We're actually using the game engine Aurora Borealis light sequence to light it how it naturally would feel. I'm setting a few looks here. We're going to have a twilight scene. So right now I'm working on a twilight scene. I'm looking at the mainly at the dirt on stage and dirt on the screen. It matches pretty well in terms of hue. Maybe it could be a little brighter on the screen, but I just want to turn down the saturation a little bit to see what that will do. On the other side as well, we have our second environment, which is a cyberpunk city. And that was designed specifically to show off two things. Number one is how to achieve the illusion of a large amount of space while shooting on a small section of wall with a very small set footprint. So what we did for that was we routed a path through the city 
that the camera and the stage will follow. And then on the practical set, we set up a treadmill that our actor would walk on. And then we match the speed of the two so that when you put a camera on it, it seems like the, the practical camera is following along the actor, almost as if you would on a dolly. It's always kind of a uh, perpetual struggle when building photorealistic environments to balance high quality visuals with the performance of the scene and making sure that the hardware can run at a stable frame rate. And in the case of many projects like Away, you're, you're shooting at 24 FPS. So the projects have to be able to hit that. We had a really heavy city environment in the background that you see at the end of the film that hurt the frame rate a lot. So for the scenes where we weren't seeing that directly, we actually took a 360 photosphere capture within Unreal. And we used that photosphere instead of the 3D virtual environment in order to bring the frame rate up and be able to hit the benchmarks that we wanted to hit. Uh, and then the other part of that scene as well that we tried to pay special attention to is just lighting. There's a lot of really diverse, colorful, oftentimes flashing lights in the scene. And we wanted to use that to show off one of the other big benefits of LED wall production, which is the emissive lighting that comes off of that, and also being able to tap into a DMX feed within Unreal Engine to automatically display lights that match the colors in the scene, which simplifies a lot of the lighting process and leads to really realistic results while being very time efficient. We're gonna simulate walking to our ledge and we're gonna fake it with a treadmill to show the action of walking as the screens adjust to the camera. So it's gonna look like a, our, our talent's gonna be walking, it's gonna be looking like she's walking all the way down the street onto our ledge to see our big hero shot. Within a way, we had very minimal use of post VFX because really we were able to get everything that we wanted to get in camera on the day of shooting. The one example of post VFX that we used was the aurora shot when our hero is looking up in the sky uh, and we play that aurora and we also see some silhouettes of trees and these trees were pulled from the exact same tree assets that we used within Unreal Engine so that when you see them from below it, it matches what you've seen in all the other shots. Uh, the first time walking into an XR stage and seeing it all come to life was quite a surreal moment. It is really hard to conceptualize the vastness and fidelity that these LED volumes offer until you see it in person. It became quite clear pretty quickly that this technology is going to be moving into the mainstream world pretty soon and it has a variety of use cases across many, many industries. There are many different types and sizes and varieties of LED volumes, which really caters to any industry and any need that a client may have. The first ones to start adapting it was, was the, the films. They had the budget for it. But uh, you know, the more that we built these out and the more that we get involved with different projects, we're learning that there is uh, applications for, for even smaller projects and, and uh, using the same technology just at a, at, a, at a different scale. So right now there's probably 100 of these out there. I give it six months and there'll be two, 300 of these out there. I'm really, really happy and excited by what we're able to achieve within one day of shooting for a while. With the huge variety of different scenes and environments and, and looks and setups, uh, I think it, it really is such a powerful example of what you can do with virtual production. I, I think the fact that we were able to achieve this in the very limited time that we had on set is really incredible. And that's a wrap. Give it up for yourself.